Hello everybody and welcome back to our day three stream for this week, week three of the qualifiers of the Victory Road World Cup of Pokemon VGC, sponsored by Elgato, GG Tour and Metafi. And this is our last match for this week. We are ending things off with a bang with two very, very notable players. And I think a very exciting match for us um, as kind of newer casters to cast because these players have so much experience under their belts. And at the same time, I just want to quickly point out, right, like all eyes are watching right now because tomorrow we will have the group draft, right? All these teams are slowly um, like qualifying towards the next stage. And we have to remember that there are other like countries watching. There's Spain, there's Italy, uh, Singapore, like all these teams that already qualified, they are watching all these players um and like kind of do a little bit of early scouting to see how they play yeah we're about to get into a very intense next stage of the tournament um and before we do we have just a final match from israel versus taiwan the the set has been decided already taiwan's had an extraordinary performance in this particular set um so this match won't decide anything for which team comes through but it might still be a point of pride for um Israel to be able to get that one win and sort of edge out um, away from a complete defeat from by Taiwan. And I'm very excited <laughs> the players we're going to highlight here, um, Anoshkar and Sai Chen Chen, um, both just phenomenal players. And so maybe for the tournament, this match might not affect anything, but it's still an extraordinary match between two brilliant players. And we're sure to see some really exciting things in it. Yeah, for honor and pride. But I thought you wanted to like like look at the Pokemon in front of us and, and kind of mention stuff. Because Israel, they um so, uh, unfortunately in weeks one and two they suffered two losses. So this is the game they are kind of going out on a bang with. And look at the like the Pokemon choices. There's a Mudkip, there's a Copperaja, there's a Lipart. So um Israel just trying to enjoy themselves as possible, play this game of Pokemon of VGC that we love. So very interesting to see some team building um, in that last hurrah, even at this stage. And from Taiwan's side, yeah, we see kind of more meta teams, but I'm, I'm, I'm like kind of curious to see so many Kyogres. So I think Taiwan just really wants to clinch that uh, undefeated streak they have been having so far. That's a really good point that Israel sort of like choosing to go out on their own terms, bringing the Pokemon that they want to bring to have a really fun game. And I think it's cool to see a team have like the the presence of mind to be able to do that, to go, okay, we might we might not be in this tournament, but let's make sure that we have fun because Pokemon is a game where you're supposed to do that. And I'm very excited to see um, what angle Anosh chooses to take in terms of like trying out fun Pokemon, giving us a good set, all of these different things. Yeah, so that's correct. So we have seen from the, the intermission just now the teams that are being brought. So Anosh is kind of going with a more tried and true like standard team, right? Because this is still a match for honor and a match for pride. Let me say a little bit of um, stakes here, like before we jump into these players' accomplishments. Chen Chen from Taiwan is actually undefeated. Wait, at the same time, Inosh is also undefeated because in World Cup 2021, um, although Israel like got eliminated in the qualifiers, um, Inosh got a 2-0 record. And Chen Chen at the same time from 2021 had a two record. And in this 2022 World Cup, as the manager, he didn't play for one week, but he is currently at a 1 0 record. So these two players are undefeated. Across two years, undefeated players facing off. And we know that they're good players. Look at this huge, incredible list of accomplishments. Anosh has top cuts at the World Championships multiple years or top 16s. And uh, Chen Chen has like a regional champion, a regional finalist. Um, a world championships top eight that in seniors that's amazing um both of these players just like so accomplished and they've been playing this game for so long like these accomplishments go back to 2015 and earlier i'm definitely excited to see these two players face off so much experience and i think as a newer player myself i feel like i have a lot to learn from them and these players are just notable figures in their community. Inosh more or less also in the US community. And then Chen Chen is really a very like influential person in the Taiwan community and someone that a lot of new players look up to. Yeah, absolutely. Inosh was like the player to beat when I was first starting to play Pokemon and I'm so excited to get to cast a match from him. And it's cool to see that maybe Chen Chen is that way for a lot of other newer players now. 
So let's jump into their teams because we saw earlier that Inosh is bringing um, the slow bro. This slow bro kind of jumped into the scene in the EU region. Uh, it's being run. Uh, it was originally like like debuted from a player called Andrea Olea, or we know him as Ben Fox. And originally that slow bro was a bronze song, but it seems to be a very good meta call and Inosh is trusting it here. And from Chen Chen's side, we also see Kyogre again. So Taiwan just really wants to play as serious as possible with this Zashen and Kyogre um, combination. But instead of a Rillaboom, we see an Among Us. And then instead of sometimes when we see a Zapdos, we actually see a Thunderer. So this is kind of a unique team in some sense. So yeah, um, I go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, go ahead, Hayden. I think we, um, we broke you. Up. Yeah, you broke off a little bit. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Um, hopefully we don't have a repeat of the revolving door of masters. <laughs> knock on wood. Um, I yeah, I will do my best to not fizzle out in internet. Um, what I was mentioning is that I think the thunderous is a very interesting choice. It gives us a whole lot of offense, or it gives. Can change a whole lot of offense into that Venusaur and Evelto, and it might be really hard to slow down with that Incineroar because of its Defiant. Um, but on the other side, there's just so many tools from Inosha's team. Like you can set up Trick Room, you've got like these bulky restricteds of Groudon and Evelto, and I'm very curious to see sort of how that's played. Yeah, that's a very good. Those are some very good points. And once again, we have the clash of Groudon versus Kyogre, Sun versus Rain. So this is definitely an interesting match for us to cast and a lot of room for these players to get creative with game plans and see how they can uh, outsmart each other. Absolutely. So we're about to jump into this game and see which Pokemon these players choose to bring. Um, in the meantime, there's also that point that there's a Moongus um, against the Trick Room team. And so Enosh definitely has like some extra mind games. Like, do you bring the Slowbro at all? It's got like a great matchup into the Kyogre and the Zashin in terms of how much damage it would take. But it would yeah. have to contend with the sleep option from Chen Chen's side. Yeah. And then notably, Enosh didn't play any games yet in this 2022 season. Then it's so curious to see Chen Chen opt for the Amoongus and it actually uh, like helps out in this matchup here because typically in Zashin Kyogre teams um, you don't have that like trick room mode so to say and have a slow Pokemon to help cripple your opponent's uh, trick room strategy and this Among Us might uh, come into play we, we, we won't be sure but uh, what we are sure of is what we see in front of us the leads coming out with a Zashin and uh, Grim's now lead from Chen Chen's end and from Inosh um, having a Venusaur team leading the Venusaur makes so much sense and pretend so many mind games and the uh, Venusaur is partnered with a very fast Reggie Lecky. Yeah, so a whole lot of pressure coming out from the Reggie Lecky and damage and from the Venusaur and all the potential switching options, the Sleep Powder, the other damage. But the Scrimsnarl is able to maybe reduce the damage output um, from Inosha's side of the field a fair bit. We will see a Dynamax come out for that Reggie Lecky from Inosha just trying to get as much damage as possible. We know it's faster than the Zashin. The Grimmsnarl might not have a way to slow it down if it has Thunder Wave as its form of speed control. And so we're going to see a whole lot of damage come out here, but we'll have to see what Grimmsnarl has to say about that. Yeah, I think having a lot of pressure coming out um, in turn one seems to be what Inosh is going for. And going for the Dynamax Electi right off the bat, the light screen from the Grimmsnarl coming out from Chen Chen does help in reducing the damage. Uh, going into the Zashin, but importantly, Zashin survives and Zashin should be able to outspeed the Venusaur. So, uh, Re Reggie Lecky at the same time reviews the life walk, which hints to why Inosh wants to go for this turn one Dynamax strategy. Um, and Zashin goes for the Behemoth Blade into Reggie Lecky instead of the Venusaur keeping it alive. As Venusaur goes for Sleep Powder and um, like, uh, Inosh probably forgetting that Reggie Eleki was about to set up the uh, electric terrain and kind of buys Chen Chen another turn. Yeah, definitely an unfortunate turn of events there not to get the sleep powder off. Um, but a whole lot of damage from Reggie Eleki and a really clutch survival. Um, just to quickly check in, am I in sync for audio? Yep, yes, you sound good. Wonderful. Um, hopefully no problems coming up. <laughs> um, Venusaur not able to get that sleep powder off. Um, and Reggie Eleki is actually just going to switch out despite the Dynamax. Well, I think Inosh um, probably expecting to, uh, to uh, like having a game plan to switch Groudon in and let Venusaur move first and always be able to check that uh, 
Zashen. But I think switching like the Reggie Lecky out mid Dynamax might be a bit curious. I think maybe he under like he was calling this quick attack, but I still thought it was curious because you could still um help do a lot of damage still in your Dynamax form. Uh, the good news is uh, Venusaur reveals that Weather Ball and is able to take out that pesky Zashen and remove it from play altogether as uh, the uh, Grim Star finishes a turn with that Spirit Break, lowering uh, Venusaur's special attack. Yeah, some really interesting plays there. No finding like sort of the only angle where Zashen goes down this turn. We know that the Venusaur's moveset doesn't include like an Earth power that it might normally to be able to take out that Zashen. So you had to set up the Sun to be able to Weather Ball. Um, and then uh, managing to sort of pivot out Regieleki, um so it doesn't have to take the quick attack. And so I know it doesn't have Dynamax anymore, but does still have all four of his Pokemon. And so maybe there's some positional games you can play. You've also still got that Sleep Powder as an option into Thunderous, which is maybe what Anosh was looking at earlier. And certainly you have that option now, regardless of the electric terrain. Yep. So um, maybe Enosh is like playing his cards as well as possible. The good news is Chen Chen still has Dynamax and it's interesting to see a Thunderous switch in instead of a Kyogre to try and change the weather back. So going straight for that Dynamax um, into the Thunderous and I think probably using the Grims now to help um, with some form of speed control against the Venusaur might be a good idea. I think um, Dynamaxing the Thunderous is something that most Thunderous players do and that might hint to it being uh, defiant. So yeah, Grims now goes for the um, speed control move of the scary phase, bringing the Venusaur back to neutral and Thunderous should be able to outspeed, being able to take a clean KO with Max Airstream. So wonderful KO um, from Tenchin's side. Um, just like the scary face negating chlorophyll and then getting that KO, um, a super big benefit. We actually, um, Anosh is going to have an opportunity to do some damage, um, but we're going to have to see what Groudon can do into a Dynamax Pokemon. Yeah, like um, Dynamax, like Groudon, um, like Inosh wasted the, like sort of switched the Dynamax out turn one, but Groudon actually reveals the Rock Tomb into the Thunderous, um, proccing Thunderous's Defiant. Like, um, usually when an Intimidate procs the Defiant, you just go up to plus one, but now Thunderous is sitting so happy with plus two, and with that Max Airstream earlier, uh, it is comfortable to outspeed uh, most of the Pokemon except this Reggie Lecky. I think that's a really interesting call from Anosh to say, I, I know that this will give the Thunderous an attack boost, but I need it to stay slower than my Reggie Lecky to have a threat. Um, the challenge is we just saw that Grimmsnarl is scary face and not Thunderwind. Mm -hmm. So it does have a way to slow down this Reggie Lucky and stop it from doing damage. So that's a tough, a tough situation for Anosh to be in now. Yeah, I think it's overall a really good game plan coming out from Chen Chen. Chen Chen actually opts not to go for the scary face this turn. So Thunderbolt comes into uh, the Thunderous with this life orb doing so much damage regardless of that light screen. Grimstar actually managed to set up a reflect, probably um, preparing more towards the late game as this plus two max airstream easily takes out the Groudon. I believe this critical hit does not matter. Plus two uh, Thunderous is really powerful. Yeah, so a really impressive um, showing from this Thunderous here. Taking that uh, Thunderbolt commandingly because of the light screen and getting off that airstream to finish off Groudon. Um, there's just a Velpo left on Anosha's side of the field trying to take down three whole Pokemon. Definitely a tall order. Thinking back all the way when um, Inosh switched out the Reggie Lecky to like uh, avoid that quick attack, that's kind of interesting. But in the macro side of things, it kind of didn't work out. And unfortunately, Iveltal needs to sit in front of a very um, powerful Thunderous. Uh, the good thing is both players uh, like like find out items and find out moves. We get to see the life orb from the opposing Thunderous as well. So this is good information going into game two. And Inosh has to go back to the drawing board here. Yeah, absolutely. That was not that was quite a commanding victory from Chen Chen's side. And I'm curious to see how Inosh will adjust. Like Inosh definitely a veteran player capable of finding another angle into this game. But that angle definitely seems not to work so well. Having the Reggie Lucky get damage off, but then need to lose its Dynamax right away. Um, and needing to attack, have all those nice Dynamax attacks and even the not Dynamax attacks from Regilecki go through light screen was just another um, huge obstacle towards really getting the damage down that Anosh needed. So I'm very curious to see if he maybe opts for a slower game or if there's another angle he can find. Yeah, speaking of the slower game, I'm kind of curious as to why Inosh didn't lead 
the trick room, right? Lead slow bro with the trick room. And it seems like having the Among Us on Chen Chen's end seems to be playing good mind games. I think going with that like Max Reggie Lecky live op idea really seems to be good because that actually covers for any opposing um, Among Us leads, right? In case they want to just simply go for spores. And we have seen in past series that a Max Reggie Lecky game plan usually works if you know how to position well and know how to take those very important KOs, making full use of the dynamics. Yeah, unfortunately, um, Chen Chen was able to kind of counter that, bringing just the Grims now to mitigate damage and go straight for um, the turn one Zashan Beam of Blade into the Regilecki that did so much meaningful damage into the Dynamax Pokemon. Yeah, definitely tough to see that the Zashan Grimmsnarl is an option from Chen Chen because you're able to set up so much bulk if your opponent goes for Trick Room and maybe just stall out the Trick Room. You might still have Amoongus in the back because we never saw Chen Chen's fourth Pokemon, like which ones he thinks are most important to bring to the game. And then yeah, there's the Behemoth Blade from Zashin to just like anything you try to Dynamax to do more damage, uh, you're still going to be taking a lot of damage from the Zashin. Yeah, I'm trying to think the downside maybe of Inosha's team is that maybe he does not have fake outs to um, like stop the Grim Star from its track. So uh, like, you know, like Chen Chen always has that plan to go for screens to really just protect the team. Like if the Venusaur were to go for a max flare into the Zashan, I think with the light screen Zashan is trained to survive that. So uh Chen Chen really like um trusting this lead of Zashan Grims now as we do see here. And Inosh on the opposing hand is uh like changing to the trick room strategy and let's see if this plays out with this slow bro lead. Yeah, I mean, the one thing that can take the Zashin's attacks really well is probably the Slowbro. So maybe there's an angle <laughs> for Slowbro to be able to do a whole lot here. Um, we do see that Anosh has the Incineroar on the back, so he has some tools to be able to like slow the Zashin down instead of needing to take the KO out, right? Um, but definitely tough because there absolutely could be that Amoongus in the back. So it's tough to know what you angle for in terms of speed control. Yep, so switching the Reggie Lecky out, maybe not wanting to take unnecessary damage and trusting that the Slowbro would survive the turn and hopefully be able to set up Trick Room. Switching this Incineroar in is such a good idea to bring um, the Zashan back down to neutral. The um, Grimmsnarl is not moving yet, so Zashan goes for Behemoth Blade into Incineroar, not doing a lot, while Grimmsnarl goes for the Spirit Break. I think doubling, yeah, making sense, doubling into the Incineroar. Incineroar's Intimidate helping out so much as um, Slowbro will be able to set up this Trick Room and let's see if Inosh can um, take full advantage of it. I think that was a really interesting piece that like Incineroar did more work coming in for the switch out from Venusaur than it would have if it had been on the field from the start. Like all of the targeting has to go into that Venusaur um, because you're so scared of the sleep powder. And suddenly this Incineroar comes in, doesn't take too much damage and has fake out pressure this turn. So the Slowbro could maybe try to start setting things up. Maybe you can do some other things in, with the field and you've got all this pressure from Incineroar alongside fake out. Yeah, now we have a game here, but it could be cool if the Grims now goes for something like a side uh, scary phase, but I believe um, Incineroar and um, the Slowbro are really, really slow Pokemon to always be able to move first and really pressure the uh, Zashan. Like, Slowbro does what Slowbro does best. Slowbro and Bronzong, I really like this strategy of Iron Defense and Body Press. As Incineroar goes for the oh, passing no! shot, Catching the Thunderous on the switch in. So Chen Chen really playing every turn perfectly and making very good reads. I think parting shot into the Grims now makes sense and calling the Zashan Protect. Maybe expecting something like Kyogre to come in, but no, catching this Thunderous. And with Thunderous's like natural bulk, I think on the next turn it might be able to just Dynamax and do good damage. Yeah, that's such a tough situation. We see a no sort of force to bring in the Venusaur to threaten the Sleep Powder here to stop the mm -hmm. Thunderous because there's no other way to keep it from just being terrifying. This thing has three stages of boosted attack. That's that's a whole lot to deal with when Dynamax is still on the field. Yeah, like, I think um, Inos just fell for the trap. Like, maybe the Incineroar could have keep, kept on the field and stayed on the field and pressured the Zashan with uh, Flare Blitz, but unfortunately that didn't happen. And... Um, Bringing the Venusaur in is probably the best way to move on in this game and threaten those sweet powders since you already know that Thunderous is holding on to the life of item. You know, I thought what could be funny is if Chen Chen switches the um, Grim Snarl in, then he can side Scary Face himself to ensure Thunderous oh. moves first. But this is not what we see here. We see um, the Kyogre switch in to help uh, with that pressure, with that offensive pressure from Chen Chen's side. 
What commanding play from Chen Chen. We've seen Trick Room go up into like a, a missed targeting into the Incineroar. And then we've just seen Protect Switch, Protect Switch yeah. every turn. And every turn, Chen Chen's position is getting better. Like now this Kyogre's in position to threaten a whole lot of damage. It's in at least a bit of a better position than the Zashin would have been at minus one attack or at neutral. Um, and this Thunderous, the threat is still as strong this turn as it was last turn. And so just so much pressure coming up from Chen Chen's side, even though Anosh technically has this advantage of Trick Room, there's only a couple of turns left. It was curious to see that the Low Bro went for a body press instead of another iron defense because maybe with another iron defense it could sort of try to soak damage from possibly the thunderous but instead Chen Chen is um, like yeah saying let's not waste time let's dynamax straight away and goes for the dynamax on the Kyogre I think trusting that the Kyogre is going to outspeed the um, Venusaur and giving Inosh a choice to go for sleep powder so yep Kyogre goes straight um, goes first with that max hailstorm is able to bring Venusaur down wow not to the focus sash but down to only 14 HP uh, one more quick thing to note was the Lobro kept going for uh, body press into the thunderous storm the damage was actually not too bad yeah absolutely Slowbro is kind of terrifying with these iron defense boosts building up we do see sleep powder go off so thunderous can't use its brilliantly boosted attack set um, and Venusaur might actually maybe be able to survive with the hail here which would be really interesting because that's so much more pressure and it does um so venusaur is still a threat that's that's incredible to take a max hailstorm and not even need a focus sash just like survive completely fine yeah i think that might be a hint as to how that kyogre is trained so and also at the same time maybe how the venusaur um is trained or maybe it's just a natural bulk but that that's kind of cool because the venusaur does fall kind of a turn of Kyogre's Dynamax there. We saw from the Hail Chip that uh, Slowbro took it first, followed by Kyogre, followed by Venusaur. So, um, like, Kyogre might logically just target into the Venusaur since he doesn't want to go to sleep from that sleep powder. And that just takes attention away from the Slowbro. I think it can be cool if the Slowbro goes for yet another Iron Defense since Thunderous is out of max and um, being able to store the Zashan Endgame could be better. We actually see Venusaur recognizing oh, wow. it might just be targeted down this turn and going for the helping hand. So this Slowbro is going to be able to get off a whole lot of damage with the body press. Not sure if it'll be enough to take out the Thunderous, but it does bring it low, which is crucial because the Thunderous has so much offensive threat here. And we see Max Lightning yeah. actually, though, doesn't take out the Venusaur, goes for the Slowbro. Yeah, so here comes the tech coming out from this Slowbro. Um, we, have, like, we have a team report in Victory Road. Um, like Ben Fox, Andrea also went on um, YouTube to kind of give the team report and this like special tech of the Wakan Berry on the Slowbro um, worked out so well bringing him to a top 4 in one of the um, special events but unfortunately Slowbro even with that 2 special defense boost is, isn't able to um, take the onslaught of a Max Lightning followed by uh, the Wild Charge of the Thunderous notably that that Wild Charge was not boosted but with that um, parting shot from earlier just being able to uh, remove this uh, slow bro from the field before he can set another trick room. Chen Chen is doing really well here to advance. Yeah, I think that's slow bro going down on exactly the turn the trick room fades, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe there's one more left, but it's not super consequential here. This character is in a great spot. Um, something that is like huge from that last turn was the lightning going into the slow bro, breaking the Wakan oh, no. Berry, so that the wild charge gets the KO. And that was like, such a strong read from Chen Chen because this Venusaur we know has Weather Ball. And it could have taken out the Thunderous, but Ino sort of like assumed, okay, my Venusaur is definitely going to go down before it has a chance to attack. I should pursue this other avenue. And Chen Chen identifying that and managing to get a win, where, or get a very commanding position, where um, this turn absolutely could have gone either way. And that was like a really clutch call by Chen Chen. Yeah, that's really cool. And I also kind of forgot the fact that um, the, like, oh, no, 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 like the, the, the the electric terrain is being set up now but you know it could have been a different like read altogether if Inosh just said okay um, if you don't take out my Venusaur I'll go for the sleep powder into you but Inosh doesn't do that goes for the helping hand and then we see the downside of like a uh, Pokemon with body press that is not stabbed um, it didn't KO the Thunderous because if Slowbro were to take out the Thunderous then maybe it wouldn't have gone down to that um, very powerful while charged. So Inosh going straight for the Dynamax on the Groudon, I think it makes sense. You just have to um, weather out all these 
uh, Max Geysers from the the Kyogre. So Fake Out goes into um, the Grims now, and then Max Geyser, yeah, in Sun, uh, probably with that Assault Vest item, um, allows the Groudon to survive, and Groudon will have to, like, boost as much as possible because this seems to be a very difficult situation. Definitely an uphill battle for Anosh to come back from that, like, commanding play from Chenchen before. A critical hit oh. will help. Oh. But this Kyogre still has half of its hit points and its weather, and we just saw it moving first, so it seems like it would be tough for Anosh to be able to find a way out because, yes, the Groudon's Dynamax, and it has a special defense boost, and it might have an Assault Vest, but it still has to take a super effective attack in the rain, um, and there's a Zacian in the back to clean things up. And that Incinero is not going to be able to kill the Zacian because Rain is up too. It's interesting though, like like um, Incinero opting to go for Fake Out instead because like you could give the Kyogre a choice. Kyogre was in its Dynamax form and Kyogre could only choose one Pokemon, so it could be useful if the Incinero went for Parting Shot. Yeah, but no matter, the um, Groudon was is like with its natural bulk and it's not holding the Assault Vest item, it's actually holding the Citrus Berry. Is able to actually survive an Origin Pulse, so Groudon is really helping Inosh fight as hard as possible. So here comes uh, Max Quake, still not being able to take out the Kyogre, that's so unfortunate. Yeah, uh, definitely tough for Inosh to come back now, but I think even if you take out the Kyogre, there's there's just like so many Pokemon that Chen Chen has preserved for the end of this game that Inosh really had to hope for a whole lot of luck, like this KO, and then make something else as well. And unfortunately, um, not in Inosh's favor, and if this Origin- Oh, the Origin Pulse does miss! So there's one more chance for Groudon to do something, um, but we do have the specter of that Zacian hanging out in the back to make this um, a pretty strong position for Chen Chen all of a sudden. Yeah, but during the break earlier, like, I was chatting with Hayden, talking about like kind of situations that we think are very dire, but um, in Pokemon, there are still like these times where you just have to dig deep and like trust um, like your game plans and, and trust that you can uh, there is always still a chance to win, right? That's what I'm trying to say. So that could be cool that the um, that the Groudon avoided the Origin Pulse, but unfortunately, Chen Chen's game plan is really very solid, and um, and with that thunderous like like being able to be the Pokemon to help in Trick Room, that was so amazing to see. And here with this Zacian, Chen Chen is able to clean up the game easily. Yeah, I think that's an important note to take. Like as this Behemoth Blade sort of finishes off this Groudon. This did wind up being a closer game than you might have thought, given how commanding Chen Chen's plays were. And I think that Inosh was still playing very well for a lot of the game to sort of secure this position where maybe you have the angles that you have the tools you need to win. And it's just that with that like brilliantly played Thunderous and a few other adjustments, Chen Chen was able to win that. But even though it looks sort of commanding, I think that there was a lot of nuance in that second game where it definitely could have been like it was a very close set. And if that Venusaur had gone for like the ice type weather ball into the Thunderous, um, then this would have been a completely different game. And it's just that sort of Chen Chen managed to identify, and now she's not going to go for that play. I can do this and managed to win. Yeah, I think um, Chen Chen just played really well, um, calling like what Inosh is going to do with all those protects alternating. And unfortunately, Inosh just fell for it because I thought maybe if the slow bro was able to get. Uh, just another iron defense off right and take advantage of being faster then um having a more powerful body press might be able to take more important ko's onto the opposing side then one more thing i want to like note from chen chen's team building is having that thunderous instead of uh zapdos that was so cool being able to switch into um that intimidate and at the same time like helping to go up against this slow bro. So like Thunderous was probably the best tool, the best Pokemon to do so. And look at how it took all those body presses. That was so impressive and something that we don't see all day um, like from a Zacian Kyogre team going up against the slow bro team. Yeah, definitely a wonderful adjustment for this specific set that Thunderous was so key and so well played. Um, just Absolute congratulations to Chen Chen for a wonderful set and wishing Taiwan the best of luck going forwards in the next stages of the tournament. Um, that's an 8-0 win for Taiwan here. Definitely showing that like they are a team to be scared of. Yeah, so not only that, right? Um, Taiwan managed to win 7-1 um, against Puerto Rico and then tied with El Salvador 4-4. And with this win, um, solid solidifies the pot one slot being at the top of the group. 
So um, that kind of helps further in terms of seeding for the next stage. And uh, the other team that managed to go through in this group, Group J, I really like to tell stories about this and highlight all these um, like all these wonderful teams uh, would be Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, um, week one, losing to Taiwan, like I said earlier, 1-7. And then um, like managing to do a comeback run, uh, winning weeks two and three in a row. So um, like congratulations and shout outs to that. Then for Group J, the teams that unfortunately are going down would be El Salvador. El Salvador last season finished top 16 and this season, not like you can't scoff at their result because it's one win, one tie, and one loss. So a very good like performance. And then from Israel, Israel team uh, players are so active in the World Cup Discord. So it's always very nice to see them here. And like the tournament is still going on, but the Discord like is still active. So uh, I hope to see like like everyone still like um playing a part and, and, and joining in the conversation as we do see our socials on screen here. Um, the Twitter is the most important. You get like live updates from us. And remember that the matches will be uploaded to um, YouTube. A lot of the players, all eyes are on uh, all these matches because you have very good information from your opponents. Then um, on Twitch, uh, if you haven't followed yet, yeah, do remember to drop us a follow and stay up to date with our matches, our weekly broadcasts. And then here's the link of the Discord server. Yeah, absolutely. And there's also the website. You're welcome to check if you want to see any more information about the tournament. Um, when we've got um, a wonderful draft coming up tomorrow for the next stage of the tournament. Yeah, so now I'm going to try the impossible. Since this is the third, like, uh, the, the, the third final week of the qualifiers, I'm going to try and list out the teams that are going to advance. Um, at this stage, like it's still Sunday, there are still some matches uh, going to be played out and still some teams fighting as much as possible to go through. And these teams are uh, France and Denmark. So the winner of the this, this pair would uh, move on. And then there's also Ecuador and Portugal. But the other results are all uh, like set in stone already since uh, a lot of us are like well versed in sports and are able to uh, make out which teams get to go through so from group a japan will advance ecuador and portugal are still playing which is very exciting and then austria unfortunately is uh, going out groups b and c we already know the results from weeks one and two so poland sweden australia argentina moving through and then colombia turkey ireland and venezuela are out and then for Group D, this is the group of death. Uh, we featured a match yesterday and we have a few casters in UK, like in the UK team. So they are very particular about this. And UK managed to go through kicking Malaysia out. So UK and Germany moved through uh, Malaysia and Honduras out. And then for Group E, uh, Mexico, France and Denmark are still playing. So Mexico in, New Zealand out. Group F, Peru and Vietnam, congrats. And then Belgium and Dominican Republic out. And Group G, uh, another team that went 3-0, like Taiwan, whom we seen earlier, uh, India. India just making a mark in this uh, like tournament with probably the most sets won so far. Yeah, that, that's what I've seen uh, around from the players talking. And then Norway is in as well. South Africa and Panama are out. So I'm halfway through. Group H, Canada and Costa Rica in. Uh, Indonesia, like we've seen yeah, earlier, uh, and Egypt out. So these are the matches we featured today. And then Group I, Brazil, and um, Brazil's in, Guatemala is out. Oh, uh, Uruguay is in. So sorry, Costa, Greece is out because we featured the match um, in the previous game. Then finally, Group J, K and L, uh, Taiwan, Puerto Rico, whom we featured earlier. And then for K, Philippines and Chile. Uh, group K was such a close group as well. And then from Group K, uh, Finland and Luxembourg didn't make it. So, commiserations. And then finally, Group L, Netherlands with a 3-0 record. Um, and Hong Kong moving forward. And then Bolivia and Jamaica, unfortunately, leaving the competition. We do oh, have one it. more <laughs> update um, on one of the matches that we weren't sure if it was resolved yet or not. Um, France won their last match. So, um, France is able to advance having... Um, Beaten Denmark. So congratulations. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, so wow, so many things happening and a very nice way to end our broadcast here. So it's down to Portugal and Ecuador to really fight their hearts out to um, be the last country to qualify into our group stages. And with that, tomorrow we will have the group stage draft. So uh, all these con- like all these teams still don't know uh, what groups they're going to be in. So everything is still in the air. Uh, the, the thing is like uh, how the... Um, our tournament is being run is that we will split everybody into pots. So yeah, do remember to join in tomorrow as we have Lu and Aaron Cybertron Zeng doing the drafting, like talking more about all these amazing teams and amazing players and giving you guys a good show. And uh, yeah, all eyes are on here because the teams that qualified earlier, those top eight play, uh, top eight teams from 2021 are joining the fray. And yeah, we're just moving on and so exciting and we get to cast more matches, right, Hayden? Yeah, absolutely. So be sure to check in tomorrow to see where your favorite countries are going to be winding up in this draft. If you heard any of the countries I haven't just listed out and want to check in (laughs) or you want to check in with the ones that got top eight before and are jumping in, uh, tomorrow, here is the place to be. Yeah, so once again, remember to check our website, uh, workoutofbgc.com. Yeah, that's it from us. This, This was a very fun stream we actually got to cast three games together that's kind of intense and all together a very nice way to round out week three so this has been the victory world uh sorry victory road world cup of pokemon vgc sponsored by gg tour elgato and metafee so see you guys tomorrow